thirty. First on the agenda, are there any changes to the dance? Yes, please. I have two. Um, discuss approved modified working hours for uh, town staff, and then uh, board work for control. Mm -hmm. Next, community concerns. Is there a community concerns tonight? Uh, no. What's up? Any community concerns? Yeah. Um, this room is only the Little Valley Planning Commission again. Did we forget the reasons that you left it? I mean, it was just a slow down growth. Um, they were taking away your autonomy, the zoning board would be subservient to them, and the state. Do you want to do that again? I mean, look at the growth we've had in the village. We have Fountain Houses and Park Meadows and Donza's uh, development over there and the new East Upper Coast. You know, if, if, if the state and the housing the uh, planning commission got involved in that, they could probably be putting all kinds of low income restrictions on it, right? And they wouldn't get built. So not only you would have no housing, not just a shortage of affordable housing, you'd have a total shortage of and if you want to go back to that, that's probably what's going to happen. And okay, this, this project across the street, on Hutchins Street, you've already given them a parking lot. Now you want to give away your autonomy so they might get this? I'm totally opposed to it. We're not giving away the parking lot. No, you're giving them a parking spot on the parking lot. No, that's, uh, there's going to be permit issues. And people are going to be applying for the permit. Well, that's me dealing with the, with the uh, at the zoning board for the PRB, they were essentially given them the parking spots so they'd have a qualified well, parking spot. We, we were giving them an assurance that they would have parking, the X amount of parking spaces available. They weren't designated spots, but it would be the, the uh, redesigned parking lot and the increased number of parking spaces that we were assuring that, that they would have. Why, why, 
you're going to surrender that authority to them again? Not necessarily. Okay, can, I just can, can, I, can, can I clarify something? Um, and I do this because I want everybody to understand. The Regional Planning Commission for projects that go to Act 250 have a regional review. Whether we are a member of the Regional Planning Commission or not, they still have the authority to do the regional review if, if a project conforms to the town plan. So whether you're a member or not, right, they still have that review authority at the Act 250 Commission. And so prior, what we're saying is why not have a voice at the table? You know, if, if we don't have a voice at the table, we're certainly not going to go in our favor most likely. But at least now, if we appoint somebody to go, like, like Judy's volunteer to, to be a select board representative for the LCPC, we can have two of them. That's two votes. And at least we know we're up against and we can be in on it, as opposed to, you know, reacting to things. And that's the big thing, is what you said, is uh, we, we don't have any authority to keep them away in some, some cases. So why not play with them? And I know, I know that there are many people hearing this firsthand, but I've heard other communities don't like the regional planning commission's concept at all. But if we're not going to take it, we can't make any changes. Brian, go ahead. Okay. I know in the past I've actually voted against this because of conflicts with staff. My, my thought is I'd like to work with them. We tried one at a time. I wouldn't mind trying again here. But at any time, we can pull it out. Also, I think we need to talk to our legislators because I don't think this being a you know, black man, if, if you don't fill in them, then you're not going to get this. Right. This shouldn't work like this. It feels like that. Yeah, well, it is. They, they pretty much have said that we're not going to get downtown this mission. Right. Unless we belong to them. Now, why? Right. I mean, we work with them, but I don't think they should be holding us hostage you know, either. So, well, I'm all in for trying to work together again, but I'm ready to yeah. pull out any time. Well, I'm like, we have so much to gain and really have to lose. The main work out, maybe the bank work out. People on the board, too. And how many years is that good? We don't know. It's unknown. It's unknown. If they run the play night, we, we can keep them at distance and use them out of water. Now, there sure, are things they do for us really good, like, like the, uh, the flood mitigation. Yeah. There are some things that they, they can't do. That we, can do. that we can't do, or it's hard for us to do. Now, this project door on Country Street isn't necessarily going to fail if they don't get a couple of extra points. Yeah, yeah as, it, as it is, it does. Actually, I would love to have uh, Dave Ford is the executive director of LHC. And he explained it really well to me on the phone. And it, it's a point system. And if they don't have this downtown designation, they fall below the point system, and that $5 million project will not happen. Not to mention that if they're giving us, they're going to give, contribute $35,000 to our reconfiguring of the parking lot. And we're going to do that anyway. That was planned long before this project was started. We're going to be doing that at our own time without that 35 grand. And so, you know, it, that benefits us in that way. I'm looking at both sides. I have to answer. I'm going to get rid of it. Then they must be the phone. That's the answer. I need it. Oh. I think that's the answer. Yeah. Can you call it? Can you oh, have him call in here? What's the number? What's the number? Try here? again, Dave. Very muffled. We're going to try to call your number at home. I'm going to hang up. You're going to try here? Yeah. Well, uh, no, I can't do it. Yeah. You've got to call the, the number all out there and put the access code in. But it's helpful to hear this part of it. <laughs> you know, the other thing, Bob, I was kind of taken back by the urgency of how quick this is, and I was surprised by it because you could just find something else to it. Well, it seems that way. It, it, it's almost in my mind like, like they go, oh no, because this case we've got to do something now. Well, they called us up yesterday, they'll come. Well, I know. Greg May called me today and he sits on the LHP board yeah. and he says he didn't know anything about us. So, when we call a meeting, an emergency meeting for this, well, the kind of locked down. Right. Well, we want to lock the door. We call, we call the special meeting because. We don't want us to be the link that makes that project fail. You know, if, if they're good with us saying we're willing to um, 
rejoin LTBT with conditions. If that's good enough for them to keep pursuing the project and not lose their funding, then I think we're all going to do it. Well, you know, I think you've grown up. It's more since you've been out of that group than it grew before. Right? And do you really think if they start with low income housing requirements on a project like you guys are going to do over church and high school, that how it's going to be in 20% low income? No, it's not going to be a This is affordable. This is a lot of time. Yeah, he's talking about, I don't think about like future projects from private developers, not from them. Uh, right. I'm not talking about like the way they depend on the data, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking, look, I think I can maybe even make three better on my side. So we're going to try this right now, so, okay? David, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right, I think we can hear you better, and hopefully you can hear us better. Okay. David, can you explain um, the situation and urgency of LHP um, in this situation? Right. They, they, our application for Village Center uh, was scored along with other projects from all around the state. And there's a specific scorecard of uh, points that each project is evaluated for. Uh, our project, we've just been notified, is a few points short. One of the reasons is because we do not have a downtown designation. That's uh, five points on the scorecard. Um, so that puts us uh, out of just, just barely out of funding reach. And so that would have made a significant difference. There's also, uh, Jim is making an appeal. Uh, I'm sorry, he couldn't be with you today either because he's with his wife in the hospital. Um, but he uh, has another appeal that he could make on another one of the scoring things. In other words, it's uh, the project at this point is not funded. And the major factor is that we're not a downtown pick. We didn't gather those points, whereas other projects were able to. So that's the short of it. Um, I can try to answer questions. I don't have a lot of other information except that. Go ahead, Bob. What other areas do they lose points on? Um, I don't. I don't have that. That sort of. Problem. We got. It. We got. It. We just. We just handed it out. You just what? We just handed it out. So. Okay. We all have that in front of us now. Well, we don't have it there. Right. But this case is yeah. Right. But is, is there information on that? Uh, uh, David, do you, you realize that even if we we join LTPC today? It's still going to take a process to get the downtown destination back, correct? I understood. I understood that, right? Yeah. I think what he told me that he it just needs to see the town's intent would could be enough to help. Okay, that that was the question I wondered about. Right. Yeah, it's not a walk in the park. I know that. Yeah. So there's a procedure and a process to get back. We've also Jim told me it also got a short ride. And I can't, again, I'm not, I'm sorry, I can't give you quotes of names of people he talked to, um, but said if the town was moving in that direction, um, it could be, it could be helpful to the project. Okay. Yeah, the fact that we were once the downtown designation, we had a, right. that probably yeah. eases some of it. That, and losing that was a consequence of not being on the uh, Lamont County Planning Commission. Right. Yeah. Indirectly, because to be having downtown designation, and I'm only offering this to make sure that everybody is technically correct. To get the downtown des designation, you have to have a plan that's approved, town plan that's approved by the Regional Planning Commission, and all those things have to come together. So, just once again, it's right. I want to understand if you can't have your plan approved if you're not a functioning member of the Regional Planning Commission. That's correct. So I just want to make sure everybody understands the technicality. I'm trying to keep going. And I had spoken with the trustees, and they were also in favor of rejoining um, with conditions. You know, we still we got to lay out the framework of how it'll work. But we're all on board in my book anyway. We haven't voted yet, but we're we're all the general consensus is we're willing to give it a try. And um, right. You know, if it doesn't work out, we're not married, you know? I understood. Mm -hmm. that, that was something I might have offered as a thought also. If, if uh, we're going to reestablish a relationship with one of the partners, um, 
figures out later that that doesn't work. Um, you know, that's 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 the future. But right now is the immediate question, of course. Does anyone have any questions for Dave? Okay, uh, Dave, this is Gary Owens. I was just wondering, is there some way that somebody could email to Dan official notice that they didn't get funded, and if so, the reason? Uh, yeah, I can I can ask you to do that. I, I think he's going to be available tomorrow morning. Um, but he's, I know his plan was to be with Mary Ellen for the day, but she's had some, some pretty serious eye surgery. Yeah, no, that's, um, that's understandable, and that's fine. Yeah. But, um. You know, when it came with a notice, uh, and, and again, he, that, that comes to the director, but I'd be happy to try to get that forward to Dan so he can see what, it, what the deal is. Yeah. The other thing, Dave, is uh, I had a call from uh, a gentleman today that served on your board, and he didn't know that it was the uh, a problem either. He didn't know anything about this being, uh, you know, the, the immediate need by tomorrow. Uh, yeah, I can't comment on how frequently he reads the communications that we send him. Uh, right. Uh, he got the same kinds of information that I did. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I would want to check on that too. I don't want to be unsure about it. I don't right. Know. Well, he was all, he was in favor of the project, but was just surprised that this had to happen so quickly. Right. Well, you and I know that, it's, that this has been cooking for a while. Um, yeah, and it was, I remember us having serious talks about it in early yeah. September. Yeah. And August and September is when Chris, Cal, and I. It's been five, six months, so we, yeah. it's not a new, it's just that when the consequence of not having it is looming, it makes it, uh, makes it appear like it's been the last minute, but it's really not. Right, good. right. Well, my phone's been bugging since this afternoon. <laughs> I'm sorry to bring that to you, Bob. <laughs> Is there any more questions for you? No. David, if you want to stay and listen in on this conversation, you're welcome. Uh, I, I really can. I've got, I've got a situation here at home that I've been managing a little bit. Now. Okay. And uh, if you would forgive me, I would have to ring off. Well, we we appreciate your input, and thank you for uh, being here. We get to chat with you. Wow. Thank you for considering us this request. I appreciate your efforts today. Okay, thanks, Dave. Thank you. Bye bye. The reason I asked if they wanted to hang in there is because the conversation is going to follow. Is is Burbage was carefully selected, and then I'm not. This is not a slam on anybody, but he's selected. His words were, were carefully got there. In that, the letter from us would have. <laughs> No guarantee, but it would certainly help toward perhaps then realigning and reassigning the points assessment for that one topic area. This is not a foregone conclusion. My, my concern is that by avoiding the regional ILCPC tonight, with the government ready to shut down for 90 days, there is legislative pieces in play here that will impact every other building project in our downtown to approve one project or to make the decision to join so we can get one project, a couple more points together in that funding approval zone. We may be crippling other projects down the road. So it's a balance of is this the right thing to do now to get those points and then we pull the cover off later so we don't have to play well GDC? Because I'm gonna tell you Read that last paragraph on the Housing and Economic Growth and the Legislative Report. I had to ask the definition of some of this stuff. So I've been looking at uh, their claim about something that was the director of my housing conservation board, or that it would be see them downtown development board, which is a board that approves designated downtown growth centers, this town centers, neighborhood development areas. We already substantial prerequisites to apply for downtown or neighborhood designation would increase. And we've been through the process. We know it's complicated. We already know what we're up against under the current rules. These are legislative, this is stuff they're working on changing. So the municipal plan would need to include a housing element of implementation, implementation steps, and a timeline for achieving mixed income and affordable housing. Applying responsibility for each implementation step and determine potential funding sources. I don't know what that means. I'll tell you right now. As well, the town.
town must have adopted inclusionary zoning. That I did get a definition on. That one is that municipalities would have to have rules in place that we dictate every housing project that comes into play, private or nonprofit, and we have to dictate that there is mandatory low income housing in all projects. I heard from the same person I did that it was a private contractor building these buildings in this town community. And he said if he is mandated on every project that a percentage is, I don't know if it's a percentage, 20 percent, 30 percent, whatever it may be, his profit margin is so narrow on building these buildings that he would just choose not to build them. Because he can't afford to have that narrow profit margin eliminated by a mandate from our zone. So they just choose not to do it. So by going to the downtown designation, all this stuff is in play, but they're on hold for 90 days. So what I don't know when this is going to come out of the legislature, what it's going to look like when it does. That may be struck from it. I don't know. Uh, I, there's a lot of stuff out in the air right now around downtown designation and the rules, but they're already saying they're going to be more stringent. I'm very leery of the downtown designation. As far as them needing some letter of support from us, I would have no issue with a letter that stated that we are working towards rejoining all CPC to a process with a memorandum of understanding or how we want to work it. That we're looking at it and actually working on it. We can prove duty to be our representatives to, through that process. Well, I am concerned greatly. Uh, that joining LCPC tonight as, a, as part of our vote is premature. I don't think we have near enough information to, to make that jump. One vote. I just put this stuff out there because I had read this and I reread it about 14 times today because there's so much stuff in here that I had to call and ask the definition of all stuff. And some stuff I still don't know. I'm not a zoning guru, but there's enough restrictive stuff in here. We already know the process is, is complex because of designation, and they're going to add more to it. And this stuff looks like, well, to add well, the town must have adopted inclusionary zoning. A restricted housing trust fund that doesn't need to revenue streams, a housing commission, or impact the exemptions or reductions of affordable housing. There is way too much going on there for me to say that I'm ready to rejoin it. <laughs> just so we can get the downtown designation, but I'm not sure we want it. Do you think, does this automatically mean that if we're not part of LCPC, we don't have to, we can ignore these? Or does, does this mean this is a statewide mandate that no matter who you are or where you are, you have to follow it? So we don't know either of those answers, right? Right. There's lies if we don't have all the information. Uh, but I'm looking at this point sheet, right? Uh, you know, part of the plan for this thing, I'm looking for a blighted area. It certainly wasn't until they showed a building there. Because they were on that. A highly ready to proceed. I will make sure I have it ready to proceed. And that way, give them the three points that you're going to give them if you get the downtown designation, it's a plot. The other thing is, it doesn't mean the project won't be built, it just means you don't get this 535 grand from the state. He's going to get it someplace else, or he's going to cut some costs. It doesn't mean that the project fails. Last time I heard the project was 6.8 million dollars. Mm -hmm. 28 units is pretty steep. Well, if, if you can't, if you can't build, you can't get the. No, if, if, can't, you, if, if you can't, can't get the 535, you can't build. Yeah, I don't know where he's going to get 5 million dollars. Anyway, we're going to be getting for our benefit, for the town's benefit. Money to help us reconfigure the parking lot. Can you get thirty-five thousand dollars? About half the cost. We also have an eighty-three. Me, it's not worth. We also have over eighty-three thousand dollars we have to put out for. Which I keep saying this wrong. Yeah, storm water. Storm water. We have to do the storm water reconfiguration of the parking lot along with reconfiguring the parking lot. How much is storm water? Probably thirty thousand dollars. Probably cost thirty thousand dollars. No, it's over eighty-three thousand. Over eighty-three thousand. So the small one man is coming in. Correct. If the filtration system goes underground, I realize that. But if you don't change the parking lot, you don't have to do that. Yes, right? you do. 
But not changing the parking lot with the parking issue we had in town is really not an issue. Whether we had only 245000 or not, we've got to look at reconfiguring that parking lot if we're going to have this viable downtown at all. Whether it's no matter what way the road goes, if we don't need to do that parking lot, we get more off street parking. We just aren't going to have, we can't get business to come in here. We can't show them that we're going to give them parking spaces for the people who walk to their store. Mm -hmm. so reconfiguring it. But I agree the 35000 is an incentive, but it's not a showstopper for us. I don't want us. The $35,000, I'm not sure what the tax bill is going to be on those apartments down on Bridge Street. It's not going to be regular tax rates for that. Right. But the tax rates on the private buildings that would be built in the future go to our grand list. Those tax dollars come to us to help cover our costs. If, if we join simply to give the points necessary for them to get the housing for one project, we could be cutting our throats several projects down the road based on the rules we're talking about. If, if these developers that are sending money into our community building these privately funded town pull the plug and say that we're not building anymore. We've just we've shut off a growth to our grand list. Uh, there's two of the risks. The risk and war doesn't match up here for the one project. I, I think I'm I'm wondering if our letter says we are working toward, and these are the steps we're taking, rejoining LCPC. We can continue to work on a downtown designation if it pans out for her while we'll do it. If that would give them the point that we need is a letter saying, okay, well, we're going to continue to work toward that. We're actually assigning a member of our board to do that, that uh, across the street work and, you know, there's a handshake work. Is that what they need? And that's enough to get them. Uh, those point savings, then that's why I would say, okay, I'm all stuck with that. But I'm all stuck with this blindly joining LCPC when there's all this stuff that's unknown and possibilities that we could lose future projects just to get the one project through. Well, as a developer expressed to me today on the phone, he knew about the points and what, what it took, you know, as a prior developer. And that's what he said, you know, it, it may have unintended consequences. By doing that, because there is a lot of other projects he's been doing in town and plans to do more, a lot more than the project on Hutchins Street, you know. So, and it's so ironic if he's done that before. And it's not only that developer, he's got uh, yes. a proposed development, like part of the old. Uh, no, Foundry Street. Down Foundry Street. Foundry Street. Down Thunder Street, they're going to clean that all up and put the old barn apartments in there, the old barn, green, sand blocks, and yeah, all that stuff. It's between the Green and, uh, and Arcade Miles. Yeah. That strip of land down through there, the big miles is going to raise all of that and then build a brand new apartment complex down there largely. Which would be some model for my city. What Dave said on the phone, though. Is that they're looking for us to be looking into doing it anyway? Yeah. So, and, and again, I'm listening to what you're saying. We're saying, well, we can look into it. And if all of a sudden we see it's not going to work for us, if it's not a good thing, we don't have to either right. join back or pull it in. Crafting a letter with strong language showing that we're working toward the end of joining LCPC, I think that we should sign that. I'm not saying that's what's going to end up happening. I'm just saying we're working, we're taking the extra step. That's right. Uh, Judy is, is now going to work back forth. I mean, we haven't had meetings. We, we started at one point and then it, it didn't happen. And then uh, we just step forward and said, you, you want to do this. Mm -hmm. Strongly worried about her saying we're actually working toward rejoining LTTC. I'm good with that. Whether it ends up happening or not, remains to be seen. I think there's still a lot of work to be done to repair the damage in this relationship. If we repair the damage and be deemed part of them, we don't have to accept them if we don't want it. We okay. find out this is a. Do you think that this, this, this legislation has not passed? It has not. Yeah. So, no, no, no. I just want everybody to understand it has not passed. Right. Um, 
So it's just pending legislation, you know, I'm not going to lie to you from your, your parents will tell you that there's any real harmful on this would be if you look at it, that any lot that is, um, has water and sewer available to it has to be from one acre lots or, you know, an eight, 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 eight acre lots, you know, um, you know, so it's a tall order. That's, that's a real tall order yeah. for, for Morristown and, and because there's still a lot of land and we have to have a big order for the village. It, it, well, even in town. Even in town. So, um, so that's, that's a big, big change to the zoning by law where a lot of these um, subdivisions are half acres or acre lots and that would be required to go to a, an, eight, an acre. That's a big change in the way the town will look. Uh, you know, once again, this is a pass. Um, but if, if, if you were to receive, if this were to pass, if I'm using big what ifs, if this were to pass the state and become law, if you were to accept the downtown designation or village designation, you would have to have these requirements in your zoning bylaws. Okay. So, and, and I agree with Todd's interpretation. There's a lot of things that I think that are in this, even from my perspective, that are not necessarily what you would want. In the community, because that's not the way the community is. I, I, you know, it, it's not my decision to say whether you want housing, what type, or whatever. But even from the funding source, where you would have to have funds, if you look at the, the things that we have to go through for a budget. You know, that's a, a big change in the way we do things. I think Gary knows best. You know, what goes in the state house is sausage, and sometimes it doesn't come out. And the farm artist the time says, what, what, comes, what goes into the cow doesn't look like what comes out of the cow. So, you know, and that's the state house. So, you know, I just, once again, this is not law yet. No. Um, and you know, I just want to make everybody aware, too, from, from a staff point of view, applying for either a village designation or a downtown designation is not something that happens overnight. It, it's more of a year to a year and a half process to, to be able to do that. And, and as I put outlined in my letter, there's no guarantee. Okay. We'll be accepted. That we would be accepted. But you know, I just want to make sure from that that technical point of view, there's no guarantees or promises in any of that. Well, so can we sit at the table if we're not accepted as a non voting member? That, and I think this is a, you know another point of, of the, the statute and the law regarding regional planning commissions. Morristown is in the Moyle County Regional Planning Commission area. You've really chosen not to be an active member. All you have to do to be a participating member is to appoint a member from the township board. Actually, you have two seats. You've really chosen not to participate, which is fine. It's, it's a select board decision. And I had this discussion with Gary, and, and I think it was, to me, from my perspective, I really felt very strongly about the select board's role in running the town as opposed to the regional planning commission. And it's easy for me to say this because I believe it to be very true. In my perspective, it is the select board's responsibility to run the town, not the regional planning commission and not the state. And that's the reason why I was very, very supportive of your decision not to be involved, because I felt like the regional planning commission had overstepped its authority on a lot of those things. And the Act 50 is a perfect example. And, and the, the Route 15 project, if the DRB has approved it and it's gone through that process and they don't have a problem with it, you know, as far as it meets the town plan, and he, he's, there's no reason for that perspective to come in at that point in time. And the regional planning commission would say, "Well, it doesn't meet the regional plan." That shouldn't happen. You know, there's very few projects that I've ever seen around in my 20 years of doing this that really have a regional impact. You know, the bypass maybe, but a couple of diesel pumps at Maple Hills don't meet that requirement, and I'm not afraid to say that because I believe that's true. That's not a regional impact project. I don't believe a regional impact. Our regional commission should be weighing in on these projects. The town says it works. That should be enough for something like that. Another, um, if that one was a regional impact, the one that Dawson should have done the same. Yeah. Exactly the same project. Exactly. They put in diesel pumps down there. Yeah. Exact same thing. And, and, yeah, I think that was a part of my, you know, I was probably the last staff member here to support that decision. I still think it was the right decision, and I'll still support whatever the select board decides tonight. Um, but that's that history, I think, that goes back. And from my perspective, you guys are the guys that are in charge of that. We're here to make sure you get it done. But, uh, we're crafting a letter saying that 
we are working toward rejoining LCPC and not do it right now with that. However you guys want me to draft the letter, I have drafted that letter. I would say you consider it joining. I would say you're working towards joining. I would say you consider it joining. I don't think we can give that to Texas. I think we have to be in the yeah, you know, I think we're, we're, we're working for it. Yeah. And if it doesn't work out, we don't do it. I certainly, you know, I don't know all the answers. You know, Eric's sitting at the state house today when I was reading, and it occurred to me that there's so much in here. And the developer that called me said the thing he's worried about the most is the, the unintended consequences of joining and how it hurt the town. We're helping more projects, like Eric said, but it could hurt Ken because of the, of the criteria if it becomes law. It, well, two things, you know, like once again, I try to make sure everybody understands the law and what it is. There's, there's two things that there's the becoming an active member and appointing members to the regional planning commission to be active and those members again. And then there's applying for the downtown designation, which is a separate action. You can't apply for a so, you probably legitimately could apply for a downtown designation without being an active member of the regional planning commission, but you're, you would never get it approved. No, that told us that. They told us you, that. You, would, you would never get it approved. That's why we haven't done that. Exactly. So you, 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 you could apply for a downtown designation, but you, you, you're, you're just wasting your time to do it. I honestly don't know how they're selling incentive for communities to want the downtown designation. You know the process is complicated now. You're, you're, Talking about making it more complicated and more intrusive, the incentive for LCPC is part of the bill would increase funding to regional planning commissions by $150,000 to help municipalities update bylaws to include inclusionary housing bylaws. There's their incentive. There, where's our incentive? You want us to take a downtown designation that is now going to increase what we have to do more, more intrusive and invasive on these plans. The developers will be also going to tell us where it goes down the sand. So I want to support the project. I love the project. I love the downtown housing process and the thought process behind the mail. Walking lanes and not necessarily need a car. And there's a lot of folks out there that didn't have to pay for a car payment, car insurance, tires, and maintenance. But they can afford a little bit more rent and afford to live in a downtown area and, and be able to walk in the bus and so on all the stuff. I think it's a great project. I love being able to fulfill all of this. So I'm not I'm not willing to fulfill one project's needs with a letter that's gonna cut our throats with private development down the road. I just don't. I'm not comfortable. If this is how that legislation's coming out. I'm wondering too, the possibly an economic benefit to our community because of the COVID nineteen virus coming from the Fed. Coming to the state, how will it be distributed? Will it be distributed through the regional planning commission? We don't we don't know that. I mean there's a possibility that we could be cutting up our business by our patient with that. So I think if somebody's gonna hand down a, a, some sort of a process for, for distributing those funds and tell us we are gonna get into our community because we don't want to be That's an authoritarian state that I did not elect the government to run. That is but we're about, but it's happening. It's happening with this, with this, because we're not a member of this board, then this project can't get funded. We're not a member of the board, so they're losing points on incentive. Right. So it's not. So there's. Well, they're losing points because we're not a government. Right. Not because we're not a member of the Right. Yeah. So we. Well, I'm not sure. We could. Well, I'm not sure. We could move to have duty to be on the board of LCPC and not even apply for that designation. Right, can do that. But you can't have a designation of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
down. We can decide whether or not we want to. We can even work toward downtown. And so all of a sudden we don't like it. We're halfway through. We see it's this. We can stop. The car is the fire weapons are. Again, all we got to do is say, see you guys. We don't want your bathroom one day. We don't need you anymore. And we're done. That's the way to I mean, that's yeah. where we can afford our stuff. I don't see what we can. We can do. Well, I ask that question. Can okay, I just technical yeah. point? I want to make sure you guys understand. You cannot legally really withdraw from the regional planning commission. Mm -hmm. You can choose to be an inactive member, which is what you've done before. Right. You so that we are now. Now. You're, you're, in, you're in this region, and as long as you are in this region, the state's not going to let you change. They have oversight. Yeah, they have oversight. They're not going to let you change. I just you know, want to make sure that everybody understands that statutory piece of it. I'm not here, please, I hope you don't understand, I'm not here to try to influence decisions or do anything like I want to make sure that you guys understand the statute right. and how it applies. You are a part of this regional planning commission, you know, this region. You can't change the state's not going to for, for, even if they, for purely political reasons, because the state would never want time on top of a regional planning commission, the regional planning commission, right? They would never let you change, even if you had the best reasons in the world to do it, the state would never let you do it. Okay, they're just, they're just not. They would hate to see cows jumping around like that. And I can't fight them for that. You're still a member. If, if a developer in this area applies and needs an Act 250 permit, the Regional Planning Commission is still going to have a statutory review to see that that project meets the regional plan. You know, and that's some of the big sticking points. The other pieces of that is review of our town plan. You know, it, Still think they review our zoning by law, so we've been through that. And then anything, of course, going forward where the downtown designation, really what they're supposed to do is offer a letter of support, not necessarily review our, our application. You know, we were, Chris is perfectly capable of putting the application together and doing it herself. It's done twice before. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to make sure everybody understands that technical piece. You are a member of the Regional Planning Commission, you can't change that. You know, you you we don't give them money anymore. You know, we used to have money in our budget form. You know, as a member, just like other members, house it helps them get grants, just like Green Mount Transit. You are the Economic Development Corporation. You know, town put money into those things to help them fund things in the area. You have two seats on the board. At any point in time, you can point to members of the town to be on that board, or you can withdraw at any point in time. Unless they change statute, I can't make you any promises at all that the legislature will do. So at any point in time, you can withdraw your members just like before and not be an active member of the regional planning commission. And you don't have to send your region or your town plan over there for their review. So you know, those are the technical pieces of it. So you're, you're there. You don't have a choice, per se. You're still in this region. You're a part of the local county. So, I just, so if we find out this does become law, we can say no, we're not going to. I think you from said that recommendation, once again, I'm not here to influence. If right. this became law, I would say that this would not be the way that the select board would want their town to develop. I'm not going right. to lie about that. I, mean, I, think, and we would, I don't think we would have an option whether we're sitting at the we have well, to be sitting at the table. This is this is only a few uh, of the downtown. Right. So we could choose not to be well, we, downtown. Right. So what Correct me if I'm wrong, but we can right now put two members on the Planning Commission board. Correct. At the table. Correct. We don't have to join, we don't have to apply to be a downtown, a designated downtown. That is entirely and completely a select board decision whether to apply for a down, either a village designation or a downtown designation. Right. I think either one of those. They're a little bit different ones with the village designation is probably a little bit easier to achieve than the downtown. Okay. But I think for this particular case, for the purposes of funding for this project, either one of them would work for, for the points for the, for the grants. So that kind of thing. So yes, that is true. There, there, and they, there, so there's no it doesn't appear to me as if there's any downside to having two members from our town at the table. I think that is, is, is you guys, I, and that's what I do. I, I try very hard not to make I, 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 I think it's very hard to try not to make recommendations. 
sometimes it gets me in trouble just to try to explain the statutory stuff. But you you have the ability to put two members on the board. I think mean, members on the board. I would say there's 15 or so, something yeah, like that. Yeah, like there's 15. The trustees can have one. And the trustees can have one. Yeah. And the town can have two. Yeah. It's based on the, the population. And then there's, I think, four or five at large members that the, the board itself appoints. So it's kind of a weird setup from that perspective. But I think from that perspective, it's just smart for us to have a board. Yeah. To be there. That, that was also Chris Talent's take on it. You know, forget about all the BS, all the the uh, personality conflict stuff. It's not like that. We should be at the table. Right. And, you know, all of us, I know all of us, we just want the best of the town. We all want development. We all want projects like this on Hutch Street to go through. But we don't want to do it and cut off the chance of you know, more projects down the road hurting us, you know, because they can't happen. But, you know, I came in and thinking, well, you know, if it doesn't work out, we can jump. We can jump before anyone said, Really? We left? Yeah, we did. But, but, but by leaving, we went on, we went on our way. Right. That, that's the big Right. So the, the point of, of our discussion is, is reference to LHP's project. Yeah. And for us to take the, proposal, the letter proposal here, the, the sample letter that was given us, so mm -hmm. to, to, that's what the work was. If we ended that first paragraph halfway through, just by saying, in an effort to continue our support, we will we are willing to become an active member of the Long Island Regional Planning Commission. Period. And then the rest of it just disappears. Because the rest of it is all about the downtown or village center of the nation. Would that still be enough for LHP for them to be considered to get their extra point? Can I make a recommendation, please? I would say review the town's desire to become a designated downtown or village center based on the legislation. Yeah. Because I think, you know, I, you know, once again, I'm not going to lie to you. If, if this becomes law, I uh, don't want to be a You know, and I, you know, I have to tell you that. <coughs> so, um, so, um, you know, if you look at this, you know, there's, there's a bunch of things. If, if, if this becomes well. So, if I, if I go back again and I and say, and you, um, if the town wants to become downtown village set, village for downtown. Because we were more, we had a village first, village designation, then we had downtown. Yeah, and I know, I was in your I remember that, yeah. yeah. And Brian can remember it from you. So have we withdrawn from that thing, the village and the town designation? We weren't able to renew because right. we didn't have all this, this stuff in place with the, the regional planning commission, the acceptance of the town plan, and their letter of support for the, the designation. So we got booted, we got oh, okay. expired. Oh, okay. Our membership in that yeah. expired. I remember that. Well, that was because they would give a letter of They would give a letter of recognition. Right. So we intend a letter to say we support the project, and then we are moving forward becoming uh, a supporting new series. We're joining LCPC, and then we're going to become an active member of LCPC. And we will be reviewing. The potential, the potential for uh, becoming or having a downtown designation. Well, it's, uh, it's the most we think, what we're going to, we're already thinking of having two pictures as a representative and maybe adding another one. Well, if you're doing that, right there. If you want me to have a hundred guys, you'd be great at it, though. <laughs> you have my full support. You can shake things up. Yeah. I think that's nice on the pocket of the table. <laughs> Good Bob, you have to use this table. <laughs> I think that if this is going to happen, then we can actually look at the community for somebody that might be interested to join Vivian on the board, representing us. Um, if, you know, all of them to be. 
Um, I think they meet once a month and they're usually assigned to a committee as well. Once a month? I believe so. They go both. But I've been mean, delegating, you should be involved for a while. All right, I'll do it. There you go. And with that in mind, we'll have a simple way of life written like that. I will vote in favor of the letter as we do so. I'll be in favor of my phone. Okay, because I don't mind for anything. I don't mind for anything. I'll put two people back on the board to finish it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like that. There's a lot of the board, somebody took Right. Yeah, I talked to Tom Smith at one point. He was, I think he was. Interested. But like, like Dan said, let like them decide who they might want to choose. Tom is very good. I work with him on a couple of other things, and he's a really good listener and a smart guy. If you would make the not aware that they have the ability to do that. Yeah, it would be strong with the voice force for three Yeah, But they did, uh, the chair and the trustees told me that they're on board with us. Um, how would we decide to act? Does there, anyone else have anything to find out about? Oh, how about this question? Mm -hmm. Once again, this is draft. Any other comments? You know, we'll make those changes. These are, once again, these are just recommended motions. I do that. Do you want me to authorize me to sign it? Yeah, I've already put it in the And then the cost of the minutes have to look up the answer or not? No, I don't think so. We're, we're, then you know, we'll get the letter out later. Get one of the letter. A lot of minutes to support it. You know, once they're approved. Yeah, because they can't be approved till Monday, right? Well, they won't be approved till the next meeting, whenever that might be. Oh, so we don't. We're not meeting on Monday. We don't know. So we get the other motion. Well, yeah, this is uh, yeah. So let me grab the motion here. Can it be? We do emails the final version. Yeah. Well, I read it. Right. He's got it right there. I yeah, put it in the letter. Okay. Yeah, so how would you guys want to modify it? You know, Eric, I can make sure she has this letter too, and then you can use whatever language you want right now. Do you want to read it? Do you want to have it on the, you know, on the, on the second page? If Bob is uh, agreed to be, this board will appoint a second member of the second Yeah, I'll take that out. Yeah. So you we'll want to be right here. Two members. Is that, yeah, what's that? You know, find out the meeting date. Um, right now we're just doing. Oh, there's no meeting anyhow. Was it like Nobody's meeting right now. Okay. Yeah, so it's saying nobody is. That's why unusual. So you know, that, all, all meetings like this have been canceled for right now. So there's no meeting Monday night for the select board either. So, um, but you, I, I drafted some motions as part of this letter. Um, and however you guys want to make those motions, or if you want to make the motions, or how you want to do it. I make a motion that we draft the letter as we discussed. Uh, and to be sent, uh, a copy of which we can send it to LCPC and send a copy to, to Jim, or are we sending it to LHP with a copy to LCPC? I think the intent was to send it to Jim. Okay. Yeah. All right. Following that path, uh, you want separate motions for 20 members? And, you know, I think there's, there's two motions there. Can we have this? I do. I'm looking at it, but it's changed some so I didn't know. Right. Well, it's really fun to hit the results of the right? Yes. Okay. So, and Eric, hit the sign on. And then, you need a separate motion for Bob and you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> you want to do that? I'll make a I make a motion for Bob and you be a second member of Representing representing John Marshall on the LC feature. We're going over here. here. Yeah, right across the street. I said. I have a motion in the second. Is there any further discussion? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. And with query, that motion was to put Bob as our representative, right? Correct. So we just want to read out loud. We have folks joining us. Yeah, you, know, you should read the motion out loud. Right. Judy, do you want to read your motion there? Well, you're going to make the motion. I'll follow the letter. I have these powers. <laughs> <laughs> Does the 
So I think so far we've done what everybody has asked. I think the governor is going to come out and put further restrictions on everybody. And what I would like to do um, is re restrict the hours to just essential employees um, between now and April 6th. Um, essential employees might, you know, are, are, are first responders. Um, you know, Sarah and the clerk's office are going to have some things that we have to do. Finance is going to have some things that we have to do. We got to pay bills, we got to pay roll, um, we got to do all those other things. Um, but the reality of it is, we don't need somebody in the office unless somebody's applying for a permit. You know, we don't um, need, you know, community development director. She's still communicating to everybody via email and phone anyway. And a lot of that stuff we can do without being here. And I think it's time for us to take that step and not have people come to work um, to list them carrying something back home to their family members. So are we going to pay them? That's that's the question. Um, and I think I think we have to do that, you know, one way or the other. Even highway right now, I would tell you that, you know, we've got highway guys out working. They're going to have to do some work. We're still coming out in mud season. There's still some grading, and we're going to have more mud. But you know, like. Yesterday we were out working on a driveway culvert. You know that's not what I can consider not essential right now. Um, and once again, we're putting some of those guys at risk simply by having it here and in contact with with other members of the workforce. Um, I would tell you that I don't think we can afford to have our highway crew out for very long because if we don't do work and start getting into the pit and making sand and gravel and soaring up for next winter, we won't get through next winter. We have to get out and do that road maintenance while there is time. However, I also think we're kind of at a critical point right now with containing or slowing down the spread of this virus and keeping it away from the percentage of the population that have those underlying health conditions that it impacts the most. And then those people are part of our community. We work with them and, and I think it's time for us to take that next action. Well, we know there's cases here too. Yeah, there are cases in Moore County and, and you know, there are cases that are out there and there are. There's, just, there's community spread. There are people out there that either have zero symptoms, uh, or very, very minor symptoms, that, that really don't know that they have anything going on at all, and, and that's how it's really getting spread now. So um, that's that's even you know, what I'm coming to with that concern. And it's a real possibility that uh, the government is going to mandate everybody's testing. Yeah, so, those who may have that. I would like to burden our finance department to track both we're paying out for folks to say in the event that there is a sort of an evaporation from the federal government to set funding down like a few loan disaster where they reimburse time to those percentages that we have to buy to track. It's a great idea. If, if there's still many people, my plan is right now is to still come in. I'm probably going to work mornings and make sure things I feel like I have things to do. I still sometimes need to, to see people face to face. It's still a important part of what we, we do here. We're, we're set up, luckily, we're set up with our computer systems that everybody can access our computer systems from home computer. It's easy for them to do. We're still going to, like I said, they're still going to come in and get the bills. You know, they're still going to come in and do the mail. Um, you know, there's still things that we statutorily have to do. But there's also things that, that we don't have to do. Um, and I don't want anybody here risking their health for things that we don't have to do. And we can certainly track that. That's pretty easy to do. And once again, from my perspective, I kind of look at when everybody's kind of tentatively opening back up. And a lot of what the governor has said is put that out to April 6th. So I've married our date with that date as well. Um, and, and this thing is evolving and changing. And it could change and we can bring people back. Or, you know, if we have to make another decision by April 6th, just like last time I met with you guys, you said we weren't there yet. I think for right now, we are right there. Mm -hmm. Well, we've already operated myself with Brian and signed the warrants, right? Yep. So that's not an you know, like team is, and, and they'll still get the warrants done. We're going to still do all those things that we need to do. I don't want anybody to misunderstand it. We've, we've been doing that already. You know, we're always going to make sure that we're, we're getting those essential services done. Um, and I'm just trying to do a minimize, much to minimize the health of the employees and the families as much as possible. Are we providing uh, anything? Do we have supplies that we provide for our highway folks in the village town that they can disinfect their trucks? They can disinfect. 
Okay. They've got the bleach and everything already. Erica's got hand sanitizer to use. The good thing about the high recruit is they can do social distancing easier than probably anybody else because they're in their third year. My concern is they bring it in from home. Or they may be, they may be bringing it in their birthday. It's not your fault because we really can't wait. But if they come to work and they disinfect their trucks after they leave them, so the next time they come in, they know that this is actually going to be out here. They've got all that here. They've got the hand sanitizers and they've got the cleaners to do that. We were pretty lucky in getting stuff like that done. If you got into the distillery, did you? For those of you who are in the I remind them to construction workers and notorious for making a specific number. It's very nice that walking across the kitchen floor to get a drink of water. Your boots carry just as much of the connection as your hands. And this is like it was fully in the shop. You know, I like it. Yeah. We can, we can do all this. I just. Extraordinary measures for extraordinary time, and uh, I, I'm doing it in my house now. I'm shooting on one in the house to get the straightest effect as possible. It's just uh, it's crazy stuff, and some stuff people don't even know. Are you going to get any repercussions of paying some people to stay home while they don't have to work? Yeah, I'm doing the same. Yeah, I hope you're going to be able to have a good thing there. I've heard that thing. I would hope not. Is this everybody's job is that if we start comparing the general government operations to the highway department, it's it's uh it's oh, well, I understand that, but if you send one highway worker home and you have the other one work, they both get the same rate of pay. Are you going to get any repercussions? I, you know, I, I have talked to the, the union representative about that a little bit. It, it, quite honestly, a lot of towns are already splitting their workforces kind of like that already. Um, I, I think, you know, the, the idea that we're paying somebody to go home, you know, we still have a labor contract with them. They, yeah. have, they have a contract. You know, so if we need them there, we're going to have them there. I don't think we're in violation of our labor contract. So I think there's one best perspective on that one. I don't think about the managers to the only if they use these four guys today, but tomorrow we get these four guys coming in. The more they're all capable of doing the equipment. We have yeah. more snow than they're going to have them all there. Correct. Right. Yeah, so. Yeah. 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 People create yeah. 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 yeah, we get we get mud. You know, I think certainly Valley. Well, I agree that most people are probably the least susceptible to the virus. And there was just an article in the paper the other day that AOT is going to let. All the uh, contractors that work because they are so distant from the media. Yeah. Five women don't see anybody for two hours, especially now the way the traffic is. They can do Vermont 100 from so and more so there are days that have a day at night. Yeah. Right. 25 cars a day went <laughs> through there as opposed to 25,000. Yeah. You know, like I said, you know, we can't afford to do that with highway crew for too long anyway. Okay. And right now, oh. you know, we're going to catch a little bit of mud out there. Um, a lot of that's already gone. I think we're still going to have some more, obviously, but um, if there's any point in time. Pretty there, much now, you're just going to get to Yeah, exactly. So, so do you need a motion for months? Yes, I would like one, too. As best as you can rough it out for me, that we are going to do modified uh, work hours um, for non essential town employees. Um, authorized stand to make an authorized stand to make sure that everybody gets paid a normal work week. So moved. <laughs> oh, you're good, Jim. Thanks. You can put me down then when I'm Oh, you moved and I'll go through you. Yeah, I'll try to keep on time. Until, until April 2nd. There you go. I'll try to get to this point. Any further discussion? All there, Dan? All right. Any further discussion? So fast. Any other business? Just you know, if you have got questions, I'm sending out the daily the said reps that are coming out. Or, you know, um, and if you got questions, call me. Like I said, um, you call me at any point in time. You know, call me home. It doesn't make a difference. If you got questions? I, I can't answer the questions if I don't know. And once again, I still plan to be here on a daily basis. It's nice to get you know, updates from the governor's office. That's really, truly really nice. Let me forward it to my to my uh, boss at Council of June. He loves it. He reads it all. Yeah. <laughs> so it's great information. You know, once again, it's a daily yeah, change. He reads all of it. 
Let me know if you've got questions or if you've got concerns or if you hear anything. Oh, I was wondering, at the last meeting, uh, staff was talking about two on one meetings so being coming overloaded. But I don't, I don't know that we're there yet, but um, I know people have offered on front porch form to do, you know, go shopping for people or whatever. Do we, is there a system set up or have those people been? And what I know, two on one, of course, two on one has the capability to expand. And from everything that I've read, I haven't seen anything that said two on one is overwhelmed yet. No. Okay. But people are using it now. People are using it. They're, they're going to two on one to get help. Yes, they call two on one, and, and then they set you up with whatever organization they can help you. The good thing about that is, once again, then if there's volunteers, the volunteers are, are screened. It, it, so there's a screening process so that you're not sending somebody that doesn't need to be out taking somebody's money. So, as far as I know, I haven't heard anything about 2 on one being overwhelmed. Um, Motley, the cities and towns, did put out some guidance today about if you are organizing volunteer efforts to make sure that you're getting the screen before you're doing that. So, that would be my big concern. Is there uh, better off to leave it up on the farm or not? Uh, and I haven't, you know, even anecdotally heard of anything out there in the community. I know there are people organizing, I think it's great that they're doing it, but you know, anecdotally, I have not heard of that kind of a need. If people are looking to do stuff. There's a lot of people that are bored out there, um, but I think 2 on one has been working well. Um, you know, I think right now, once again, it's people, the best thing that people can do, and it's the hardest to accept, is just to stay home. You know, that is the best thing that everybody can do right now. Um, I see the, the major stores, the uh, park shop or Hennifer, they're designating special hours, special hours, and people to come in. And, and supplies are starting to come back out. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think we have Thursday morning. But, uh, sure. And he is looking into the first meeting this Thursday morning, uh, setting up using local law enforcement delivery. Um, food items to those that are unable to get out of their homes. So there are local initiatives going on that don't involve volunteers to be a program to judge the farm. So we don't have to go through the vetting process. So that being a huge piece of it. So uh, we're, we'll see more come on that. But the, the main first thing is going through the Good to hear that project on it. Always very forward thinking about this stuff. Mm -hmm. Any other business? What's happening with the homeless shelter because they're not taking a meal? How are they getting fed? Does anybody know? Yeah, there's somebody who's feeding them. They're just being fed three meals a day. Yeah. I don't know what that structure will show them on. They're feeding three meals a day. However, depending on how the government's mandate comes for the stay at home rule, they may or may also include that those shelters are shut down. But that the folks that are in those shelters will be put up in hotel rooms. That's and be fed too. They're making all kinds of provisions. It's, it's just concerns that some of them don't get a meal and a one on line, so no, we're not taking any food. So, like my primary meeting where. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> just one more quick comment before you know, leave you guys all there. You know, I checked with both Sarah and Tina, you know, Casper wise. You know, there, there's no issues up there, and their tax time comes up to the rural net. Um, and there's no legislative help yet for collecting property taxes. Um, it, you know, since back in session, minimally trying to do some stuff from what, I, what I've heard. Um, all that being said, you know, as far as cash flow, we're pretty comfortable that we have enough to cover everything that we would want to do between now and here. Statutorily, the select board has the authority to borrow money for up to a year. Um, in anticipation of taxes. So, but right now, you know, finance people are telling me that you know, that's not really an issue, that we, we have enough cash on hand to continue to function. I think that really helps, goes back to the way we're set up, with we, we borrow in anticipation of taxes every year anyway mm -hmm. to keep things flowing. So, from that point of where financially we're set up very, very well, the, the tax revenue that comes in to some towns is all they depend on. We're, we're set up financially very well that we don't have to do that. So, um, going through. So, from that perspective, I think we're in good shape too. A couple people would ask me that, but we don't see an issue so far. Good. We're here, folks, and we're Before you adjourn, I'd just like to mention that 
I think that we all ought to be in contact with our legislators about this F-237 and H-926. I don't want to suggest that they both know for a change on something. But you can all do it wrong, just a suggestion. I think it's a little bit too much. I think it's a little bit too much.